Hey everybody, welcome to Two Zero Q Hot Takes, where we discuss issues both big and small. I am your host, the very handsome Tim Kirk, and today I'll be talking about gay pride and my early experiences as a gay man. The first time I ever got up the nerve to go to a gay bar was way back in 1979. I went to Boots and Saddle at its original location. I did so without a female BFF, members of PFLAG, or the entire Gay Straight Alliance from my school. I was on my own. BNS was a leather Levi's bar at the time, dark and moody, with very hot men. I was 19. An old guy. Really old. Really, really old. About 30. He was a very professionally well-dressed man with a pleasant smile who offered to buy me a drink. And I froze, squeaked out, thank you, no, no, thank you and turned on my heels and ran out. I realized at that moment that I had absolutely no idea how to conduct myself with other gay men. I was also terrified at the idea of anyone I ever knew possibly walking by, as if they would, as I entered or exited any gay establishment. My desire to be in the company of other men soon outweighed my fear. I found myself sauntering down Christopher Street, passing dozens upon dozens of guys who were Freddie Mercury clones, hair helmets, dense mustaches, wife beaters and tight jeans. They were all making out on the hoods of parked cars. I kept breathing heavily. There were many bars and establishments catering to the LGBT community at the time, unlike the barren wasteland that is Christopher Street today. Back and forth I would go on an emotional roller coaster of desire, fear, anxiety, the ego rush of realizing that not only was I attracted to other guys, but that other guys who were attractive were attracted to me. I started going to bathhouses, all the while pretending to be heterosexual. The very first one, also at age 19, was the Big Apple Baths, which I believe was on the corner of 49th and Broadway. You had to walk up to the second floor past the mural and the sound system playing show tunes to get inside. It was dingy and small, but they were naked guys in there, and I did not hesitate to join them. I soon outgrew the Big Apple Baths and started going to the new St. Mark's Baths, which was the most amazing gay experience I ever repeatedly had, ever. It was my gay nirvana. How I managed to sidestep the plague is beyond me in every sense. I was literally surrounded by the hottest, most beautiful contemporaries I could ever possibly imagine. And they were nice guys. I used to leave that place with a sigh and a broad smile, usually in the early morning hours. Anyway, I would find my way back to Christopher Street and eventually managed to spend time in as many of the gay bars in the West Village as I could. I also spent a bit of time in the East Village and found myself on 11th Avenue between 20th and 21st Streets with ever-increasing frequency. Being green and naive, I had no idea of certain codes which the gay community adhered to. One Sunday afternoon, I went into Badlands, which was on the corner of Christopher and West Streets, and it had a particularly disgusting stench to it, and I saw piles of coats and jackets on the floor. I tried to start a conversation with a few guys, but was completely snubbed. I tried to talk to one cub who summarily dismissed me as a brown. I asked what he meant, and he told me that I was a brown because I was one of those suburban wusses who got a brown leather jacket like Fonzie had on Happy Days, but the code was black leather only. He then turned away, and I felt completely rejected by a not-too-hot-looking, unpleasant grump. Okay, lesson learned. I strolled onto the piers at all hours and found myself in yet another wonderland. I met so many sweet guys, I just kept feeling this deep need to identify, but it took me forever in my mind to come out. When I finally did come out to myself, it was like a light turned on, in and out of me. Everywhere I went, I was experiencing a completely new and different thing. Unlike today, I still had to go to bars and out-of-the-way places, but just the mental click of making my identity known changed the way I perceived and experienced gay life. My most surreal experience 
was at the Spike one evening in, I think, 1987, summer night. I walked in right after opening. It opened at 10 p.m. Noticed one lone motorcycle parked outside, and I was the second customer in the place at the time. The first customer was an older man wearing leather from his chin down, leather jacket, leather pants, leather boots. I walked up to the bar and ordered a beer. The older man turned to me, snarled, and said, you're a shit. I could have you. I could have you killed. I could have you. I could have you killed. You're a shit. I could have you killed. You're a shit. I could have you. And it was Malcolm Forbes, whose beard at the time was Elizabeth Taylor. She was not present. So much for benevolent tyrants. Needless to say, this pleasant conversation made my evening, and I walked away, finished my beer, and walked up to the eagle's nest, where I quickly made friends with other guys who were arriving and had a good time. Anyway, I have many stories to tell about my experiences as a gay man in New York City, and I cherish them dearly. Gay life, especially in New York City, has come a very long way since then. I still keep these memories in mind as I see younger gay folks nonchalantly, matter-of-factly strut around and act as if there was none now and never was a challenge to surviving. I wonder if they only knew how many people in the city itself are still struggling, what it's like in the suburbs and the rural areas. It's not all Skittles and beer. On another tack, the oddest thing I have seen recently is a website for a gay clothing optional campground in Alabama which looks like a place the villain in a slasher horror flick would take his abducted victims. The buildings themselves look straight out of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and the surroundings look desolate and unsettling. This is another distinct aspect of modern gay life, albeit something I am not particularly motivated to take part in at the moment. Shift to Pride, 2019, NYC. The march goes right through my neighborhood. I look forward to it. The crowd is expected to be at least 4 million strong. That's a lot of support for being your authentic self. Peace, love, pride, community, and happiness, sweetie darlings. See you next time. Thanks for listening. And as the kitties say, peace out.